Soon, because what Prescott tweeted today and said he is going to follow.
Scott. Thank you. Hey, okay. congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, today. No. Bob's Bob missing. Called off, so we just decided to just. Oh, that's right. And then when we, but I still, I still, in, I still had to sneak in the back door. I couldn't come in the front door yet. Tell you <laughs> oh, they was. We tried to have the. Yeah, they, they didn't give you the code. They didn't even know where to be. I saw you. Hey, Brad, is that? Scott, they didn't give you the card. Channel six. Hey, where's the? We're not live, are we? We need a Ralph's card. We might be. Yeah, give him Mike. Welcome. As president of the park board, I make the following determination. It is neither practical nor prudent to permit the public to physically attend tonight's park board meeting for the reason that the continuing pandemic threatens the health and well-being of the public in all or part of the jurisdiction of the district and because public participation attendance at tonight's park board meeting is available via remote means as allowed by this year's COVID-19 related amendments to the Open Meetings Act and also due to the continuing restrictions on in-person <clears throat> gatherings imposed by the gubernatorial orders and health-related disaster declarations. For these reasons, I've also concluded that it is unfeasible to allow the public to physically attend this evening's park board meeting. Therefore, tonight's park board meeting is being held for the public by remote virtual means and more specifically through the Google Meet platform for the information set forth on the posted agenda for this meeting. Kathy, can I have roll call, please? President White. Here. Commissioner Cook. Here. Commissioner Wallace? Here. Commissioner Souter? Here. Commissioner Yankee? Yes. Okay, our first order of business. I've got uh, three sets of minutes. I've got April 22nd, 2021, Committee of the Whole Meeting. I need a motion and a second to approve. So moved. Second. second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. Next up is the April 22nd regular meeting. Same thing, I need a motion and a second to approve April 22nd, 2021 regular meeting. So move. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. Last, I have the closed session meeting from April 22nd, 2021. I need a motion and a second. So move. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Wall. Yes. President O'Malley. Yes. Uh, public communication, any comments from the audience at this point? Any correspondence? Uh, do staff or commissioners have any correspondence they'd like to share with the public at this point? Hearing none, Tom, during, uh, you did have that one from the seniors. Thank you. Yeah, actually. I did want to read that. Okay. It's kind of here. Uh, it was a letter from the Sheila Ray Adult Center. Uh, to the Mayor Craig Johnson and the Park Grove Park District uh, from the Advisory Senior Board. Now, this is pretty short, I'll just read it here. Dear Mayor Johnson, <coughs> the Advisory Board and members of the Sheila Ray Adult Center would like to express our appreciation for the work <coughs> to obtain the COVID-19 vaccine for our active adults. We'd also like to commend not only the Village, but the Park District, uh, the Elk Grove Police Department, the Elk Grove Fire Department, and Jewel Osco Pharmacy, along with all the volunteers involved in providing the opportunity to receive the vaccine. Everyone I encountered was so professional and pleasant. Again, we want to thank, uh, uh, say thank you to everyone. You were all so well prepared for the whole experience. You made it quite painless. Uh, Barbara uh, Brenke, uh, Senior Adult Sheila Ray Advisory Board President. So I know when our, my last meeting I attended, they were very happy they were able to get local shots and uh, the convenience and just the way we were set up was so professionally done. So uh, once again, thank you to the mayor and the trustees for getting the vaccine here, as well as our staff and uh, providing, uh, using our facilities. I know we had a lot of staff volunteer uh, in directing traffic and helping people get to and from. So uh, thanks again very much from Sheila Ray and the commissioners. True. Hey, Brad, are we gonna get that at any point or not? No. Okay. We're at recommendations for acceptance and approval. I've got 5A, 
Any motion and a second for approval of pay request number nine from Fred Quinn Corporation for Construction Management Services for the Fox Run Golf Links Clubhouse and Maintenance Facility Project in the amount of $870,504. So moved. Second. <coughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Shuck? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yep. President O'Malley? Yes. We need a motion and a second for approval of pay request number 19 from Williams Architect for Professional Services and Construction Administration of the Golf Course Clubhouse and Maintenance Facility in the amount of $10,931.62. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. I just got one question. Yep. Uh, ben, do we have a time frame when I drove by the other day the clubhouse? It looks like it's coming along on schedule pretty well. Um, do we have a time when it's supposed to be under, under roof? When it would be enclosed? So, so, I believe the roof is done. Okay. So, it's all in the call. Okay. So, now they're working on the inside. So, they're actually doing, um, you know, framing, HVAC. Okay, so they've all the trade. Yeah, so the trades are inside now. So, everything's enclosed. I know that we don't have the windows. There's a few in. outside exterior facade stuff that you can see the bricks. Yeah, down. there's no windows in, yeah, but windows, the roof is. But they're starting to. They've moved a lot of the trades inside. Okay. Uh, I believe the, the roof is done. I think that was one of the things that they were pushing to get done. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Sounds good. That's all. <coughs> Kathy, roll call, please. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. <coughs> um, next, I need a motion and a second for approval of pay request for, uh, from Perry Weather System for installation services, material, and software subscription for the 41 outdoor warning system and public address lightning system units in the amount of $167,272. So moved. <coughs> Second. Roll call. Go ahead. I did. I did. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. We are at items for information. We're going to Bill, can I circle back real quick since yes. we do have uh, Commissioner Frankie and Mayor Johnson here? Um, I want to, personally, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you for your uh, help on that. This has been a topic on the Park District for I don't know how many years. Um, it got the system we had was degraded and not functional. Um, and we, I really appreciate your help, truly. I think it was, uh, my argument always was this is a system that can uh, help every single taxpayer in this town, whether they liked it or not, they could hear it. Different than a ballpark, a soccer field, where maybe it's just a small group that uses it. So, thanks again. And Commissioner Bietke, thank you too if you was here. Well, if I, first off, <clears throat> I want to thank Ben. He did a lot of work, getting prep work. It was easy for us to, Jeff and I, look at it. You guys did all the work, but we appreciate the partnership because we feel very strongly. You know, when we first put the light section system in, we're the first town in the country to have the entire community borders protected. And that's why we're glad you want to work with us again, partner with us to make sure it's not just the people like I said in the park, but the entire community, people in the front yard, people in the backyard. They are, they're used to an elk grove because we've had it for so long. But again, your staff, you should thank your staff, President O'Malley, the rest, did a great job, made it easy for us. And again, we're glad to partner with you and the safety for this community is paramount for both of us. So, but thank you, we're glad we could do it together. Absolutely. Yep, agreed. <coughs> Tiffany, you ready? Yep, ready. Lead your services update. <coughs> thank you. So, um, an update on our Shaleray Adult Center. We're currently at 201 members, so we're getting really close to where we were previously before COVID. Um, and in April, the center hosted current, uh, current events with the mayor. So thank you, mayor, for coming. Um, there were 28 people in attendance. And then our first in-person luncheon is happening May 19th. So if you're listening and you would like to register, um, you can register um, at the Hattendorf or Pavilion <coughs> Building. It will be a catered lunch, and you can either eat it there or you can take it home with you, whatever you feel comfortable doing. For adult athletics, our adult softball season has begun. We have 11 teams in our over 50 league, 12 in our over 60, seven in our over 65, and there are nine Wednesday teams and 14 Thursday teams in our co-ed league. The Audubon Skate Park, indoor skate park, is closed for the season. That closed April 11th. Um, a big update for dance. So our dance companies are continuing to go for gold this competition season. The Ignite, Teen, and Thrive dance companies competed in Batavia, taking home eight platinum awards and seven gold awards. 
along with a Best Choreography Award and Judge's Choice Award. All of the dance companies are competing again this coming weekend at Oswego High School. Our recital this year will be June 1st through the 4th at the Prairie Lakes Theater in Des Plaines. The theme is Broadway bound and you can attend in person and this recital will also be live streamed. For early childhood, we have graduation ceremonies coming up on May 25th and 26th. So we wanna congratulate all of our graduating preschoolers. And then currently we have 94 preschool registrations already for the 21-22 school year. Our new virtual open house video that we launched on YouTube already has over 100 views. And a big shout out to IT because our new online registration form process is running very smoothly. Um, in April, we had 30 new members at our Pavilion Fitness Center, eight of those being conversions from our 10 visit scan pass. On May 4th, we held Member Appreciation Day and it was Star Wars themed. So we had raffle prizes, giveaways, and we even had a special visit from some stormtroopers. For the month of April, um, for our school care programs, we had 50 registrations for our school's day off program, 116 for kids club camp, and then 538 for kids club after school. In April, there was the winter production of Susical Junior held April 16th through the 18th with 362 total tickets sold. <coughs> we have selected the productions of Frozen Junior and Lion King Junior for our upcoming summer performances. There's a new offering in youth athletics that you will not find in the guide. We are partnering with Elk Grove High School and we are offering basketball clinics for fifth through eighth graders in June. There'll be one clinic for the boys, <coughs> one for the girls. They'll be spanning two weeks, an hour and a half each day, four times a week. So please check our website. Registration will be available in person and online. And then lastly, our youth athletics. Baseball and softball are underway. Travel soccer tryouts were today and yesterday. Football has their registration and fitting day this Saturday, May 15th at the Pavilion. It'll be in the Garden Terrace room. And then cheer just added a new program. There will be a cheer clinic held on Sunday, June 6th from one to three. So if you have an aspiring cheerleader or you already have a cheerleader in your house, this will be a great clinic for them. So sign up today. Thank you. Any questions for Tiffany? Thank you. Parks and planning update, Ben Curcio. Can you okay, that'll be fine. Thank you. Business services update, Brad Schultz. What's up, Brad? Thank you. I got a short one today. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Programming, like Tiffany just said, is ramping up. We have tons of jobs available um, throughout the district, part time, full time. Visit our website, elkgroveparks.org, to apply. Um, and then on the golf course end, we are really ramping up. We're in the full season. Um, seven days a week at the driving range, permanent tee times, and leagues have started out of the Fox run. So uh, continue to go online and book your tee times. That concludes my report. How do you have the numbers for April? Obviously we didn't have a lot of rain. It so. was a very good April. Um, I don't have the exact ones here with me, but it was very good. Okay. I want to say best month in seven years, best April in seven years. So. Yes. Good. So Let's keep it up. Going well. Exactly. Yeah. Any questions for Brad? Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Marketing and communications update. Kelly Carbon, please. Okay. So, I need a prop. So. <laughs> um, the long-awaited summer brochure hit the doorsteps on Monday and Tuesday, so I hope Channel 6 <coughs> is good view. Our summer brochure is in print and it's been a year since we printed a brochure. So everybody, um, I hope, received it. If you did not, you can call uh, customer service. We'll be more than happy to send one out to you or we do have them at our facilities. So we have them at um, Pavilion and Hattendorf. So with that, uh, since Wednesday, we've taken 900 registrations for summer programs and two-thirds of them have been in person, one-third have been online. Uh, the marketing department was very involved in the uh, May the 4th Be With You customer appreciation event for the fitness center, and if <coughs> you'd like to see pictures, if you were not in the fitness center on May 4th, you missed stormtroopers taking the track. So we have some great pictures on the Pavilion Facebook page, so be sure to check that out. 
Uh, this year, as Tiffany mentioned, we had a new process for our preschool registration and it is highly successful and very popular with, it's been a great process improvement for staff as well as for the families. So that was very popular. This week we also sent out an e-newsletter, so I hope everybody uh, that's watching tonight is uh, receiving that, but we highlighted our youth football, gardening at the farmhouse, which is coming up on Saturday, um, our summer fitness passes, our new movie in the park uh, that's coming up in June, and uh, information about our Rainbow Falls opening and membership. So there's a lot of valuable information in these um, bi-monthly newsletters that we send the beginning and the middle of the month, so if you're not uh, receiving this, please go on the website and you can um, go to elkgroveparks.org and you can actually, uh, you know, sign up to receive these uh, in your email. And lastly, I just wanted to mention that uh, mid-summer we're going to be launching an app for your mobile uh, devices. So it's going to be a Park District app with some really great features and that will be taking place um, and we're going to be kicking that off this summer. So that is my report. Any questions? Oh, thank you. Executive Director update, Ben Curcio. I'm, I'm a bit broken. Uh, uh, I feel like it's really hard for me to come up with updates. So I have one on the park side and one on the community side, which we talked a little bit about earlier. The first one uh, <coughs> is a project update for Rainbow Falls inline rink. Um, the surface has been redone, the asphalt's down, now it's got a cure. It takes about 14 days, so we're asking everyone to be patient. Uh, so we'll have a nice new surface. Um, after 14 days, we'll do the color coding and striping. We are going to stripe it with pickleball and um, inline hockey, so it'll be a dual use. And uh, we'll be doing um, communicating scheduling for when it's going to be for pickleball and when it's going to be for inline. So we'll be looking for that probably towards the end of May. And the set last one is the lightning, uh, our lightning alert system is in, installed, uh, it's working. Um, I don't know, I haven't heard it, so, but it is working. I did check online, um, so we're pretty excited about that. And I just want to reiterate that you're going to hear a large horn sound. The strobe's going to go off. That means take shelter. And it's about 30 minutes. You can come back on as long as you hear three short blasts and the strobe is off. Um, other than that, you know, the clock keeps ticking until you, you hear the, the three short blasts and the strobe turns off. So. Just want to remind everybody that's how the system is going to work exactly like Thorgard did. So, so Ben, on that, I know yeah. it also has the ability to program like phrases. Um, is that just on certain sites or is that on all of them that are going to have? And are we so, going to have? Right now, I'm the only admin, so I'm the only one that has access to that. But yes, you can, it's text to voice. Okay. So you can text any <coughs> message you want in any park you want or all parks. And so, you can do announcements, you can do whatever you want to do. Okay, well I'm just saying that's kind of a new amenity yes. that the old system didn't have. So rather than just relying upon them to know what the horn and the <coughs> lights mean, should we also have a comment on there just explaining, you know, take shelter until it comes back on, or some, something to give them instructions. So the way the PA works is it's real time. So yeah. we would, we don't have, we're not gonna have someone monitoring if there's lightning at calf. You know what I mean? So right. if we wanted to make an announcement, let's say there is a big tournament there, and one of so our staff is actually there, and people aren't leaving the field, they could actually do a PA announcement to say, hey, take cover, take head for shelter, there's bad weather coming. Oh, so you can't program for that announcement to go off when the siren goes off? No. Okay. It's a separate PA, so you'd have to, you'd have okay. to basically go in and, <coughs> and, and, and you know, real time and just say whatever, okay. you know, type in whatever you want to say. Is there is the voice that comes out selectable? I know it's text to voice, but is the voice selectable? It's a computer voice. I don't know if it's. I don't know if you can change it. I don't think so. Yeah, I was thinking Morgan Freeman or James Earl Jones. Yeah. Or Commissioner Souter. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't want to hear that. No, no, no. We're gonna need you to come in and do some taping, though. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions uh, all for Ben? Um, <coughs> the uh, committee of the uh, whole we didn't get to stabilization. Did you want to talk about that at all? Or sure. Well, we did table it for our next committee of the whole. Okay, so is I that can, something? I, I can. I mean, so hopefully you read it. 
So we're doing some shoreline stabilization of Salt Creek. It's about 75 feet on the <coughs> Morton Park side, 75 feet on the Olmstead side. And what it is, is it's, uh, if you've been to Naperville, it would be the best example. They have tiered, uh, I, call them, I call them Rosetta Stone. So you're actually going to be able to get down to the creek and fish off of a uh, stone you know, at creek level. So it's going to be safe for kids to do that um, on both sides, Olmstead and um, more. Okay, and these are basically the drawings that we need in order to get approval yeah, from... Yeah, because uh, permitting is pretty intense with this. It's not, it's not just MWRD, it's FEMA, it's, FEMA, it's Army Corps. There's okay. a lot of um, uh, government agencies you got to go through to get it. So we're in the process of going out to uh, permitting for it. Okay, I know we had talked about possibly putting a, um, like a, so you could launch a canoe from there or whatever, or a kayak. Is that something that would be a separate thing we do later? Separate than this, yes. So we're, that's not going to be included in this yeah. in these plants here. But well, you could probably do it from there. Probably. You probably could if you wanted a small. You want to carry a canoe? You probably could. It's good, like I said. You're going to be at the creek level. Okay. You know, and it's a tier, so you'll. I mean, that's how they're getting in there now. Yeah. They're just okay. sliding down the mud. Right. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. We're at old business. Do any commissioners or staff have any old business they'd like to discuss at this time? That's a no. We're at new business. Uh, the first order of business is 8A. That's the 2021 Part 40 commissioner election results. Uh, Cook, suburban Cook County election results have been finalized. Uh, William O'Malley had 2,048 votes. Scott Carlson had 1,971. Both were elected to six-year terms. My only comment to you is you must have made a lot of people mad that you're saying no to a lot of fencing projects. <laughs> um, oh, that was pretty tight. You have to go. You know, um, we <laughs> talked about it. You know, <laughs> when we get to you, we'll talk more about your zoning and planning history. Um, we're at Otho office. Kathy's going to do that. Bob is our secretary. So uh, at that point, no, Bob is. So Kathy researched it. Kathy's going to read the oath. So. Oh. Um, you ready? Hi. Okay. I, William B. O'Malley. I, William B. O'Malley. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. <coughs> Of the Office of Park District Commissioner. The duties of the Office of Park District Commissioner. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Thank you. No. Scott, do you have the paperwork if you'd like it? Okay, go ahead. I, Scott Carlson. I, Scott Carlson. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Office of Park District Commissioner. The duties of the Office of Park District Commissioner. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Scott, if you want to give a little bit of background on yourself or introduce you to the public, or are you content just to move on to saying goodbye to Ralph? It's up to you. Um, not really. It'd be. <laughs> well, you never talk. You get six years of talking. Come yeah. on, Scott. Go ahead and tell us something about yourself for the rest of us. Well, I moved to the village in 1977. I had all my kids, three kids born here. I got four grandkids here. My son's a teacher and coach at the high school. I got involved with the park district first time in 1986. Um, it was soccer and then girls softball and then from there just went I was on a football board for over 10 years coached football for over 20 was on the basketball board um, 
been on the zoning board and then the plan commission since 2009. I really like living here and you know I hope my grandkids stay here and I'm just honored to give back you know to the village and the park district and I'm gonna have a hard time owning up to yeah, piece of cake. His. Absolutely. <laughs> well welcome. Um, I saw Craig this afternoon and we were commenting about you know the tenure and the length of his board and how they stood together until Bart Dill had left and then Jim Petrie. And I had mentioned that we've only had two changes in the last 20 some years ourselves and that was with Ron Nunes leaving and then um, Ron Foster and Ron Foster were the only two so um, that's something to be said on the park district side also um, when people talk about some of the history of the village, and, and Craig's here right now, you look at the intergovernmental relations, and you know when you have people that actually were born and raised in Elk Grove and care about it, it's easy to see the other side on the village side and say, we've got to make this work. The lightning detection system being in one of those, you know. So that does bring us back to Ralph <coughs> now, and John, you said goodbye a little bit, and it's not a goodbye. About the, I have no notes, but Ralph and I have been friends since high school, and I'm not gonna do any of that mushy stuff, Ralph, but Ralph Souter, I'm telling everybody, he was a great commissioner with so many different characteristics and strengths that, you know, I'm proud of my association with Ralph, and if you thought he was really a good commissioner, he's actually a better person. And, you know, unfortunately, or maybe probably fortunately, Ralph and I would have our battles at Committee of the Holes, and I mean, no holds barred. And the best thing that we thought about us is, couple hours later we'd be at Coach's Corner and we could have a beer and we would respect our differences and his vote would cancel mine and vice versa and that's why there's three other commissioners and that's why the community actually can talk to us. It's kind of neat. I, I did invite Craig here. Uh, a lot of the people don't know this. It's probably the first time we're at certainly a televised event where class of 1978, class of 1978, class of 1978, you know, this could be no different than being in English 101 as a freshman or a sophomore where we're sitting in three different rows. So it's pretty rare that three different individuals coming from the same graduating class, you know, ended up uh, in elected positions for long times. Craig, what, 24 years as mayor and a couple four year term is that and now Ralph 18 years and myself 20 years, you know, so I'm glad that, you know, we do have not only friendships, but, you know, solid history that we can work on any kind of community problems together. So, um, and, you know, we'll continue to be friends and I'm trying to get out on your boat and stuff like that, but cool. all, I can tell, all I can tell the public is just, there's so many great traits about you. And, and <coughs> Diane Malinowski did a really good job. Uh, Tom added a lot to it. And on page three of the brand new brochure, you know, it's thank you, Commissioner Sauer. So everybody, please read that. And one of the points that I tried to put, and Diane included it is, and I think this does help, is, you know, maybe people think it's a weakness. I don't know if it's a strength, but what I loved about you best is 20 people can come to a meeting and we weren't gonna be intimidated. You certainly weren't, you know, you'd respect their opinion, but you also knew that there's 33,000 other people. and. You know, common sense was the name of the game with you. So on behalf of the community and myself, it was great <coughs> serving with you for 18 years, Ralph. Thank you. Tom, anybody? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't really add too much more, more other than for the people that didn't get this, I'd like to just kind of go over some of the accomplishments because, you know, over the 18 years that you serve, you don't realize time seems like it goes by like that, you know, and. Um, you don't realize until you start looking back as to some of the things that you were involved with in the community to make it a better better place. Um, so I just want to quickly go through some of the things that are in this article that Ralph was uh, helped contribute to. Uh, first of all, if you don't know, um, he's the CFO uh, for an attorney law firm in downtown Chicago, and that experience brought great insight into a lot of financial decisions that we made. Um, his contribution. Um, as treasurer through, I think most of the time you were treasurer, uh, kept our district strong, uh, not taking anything away from Busby and Brad, uh, but on the community side, we also have to make sure that that's uh, being handled appropriately and have a plan in place for accomplishing the things that we'd like to accomplish in the village. So outstanding job uh, in your contributions as 
not only financial consultant, but uh, your experience and uh, that you, get, you brought here. Uh, during your tenure, we, we, we built Rainbow Falls, uh, renovated uh, <coughs> this building, the maintenance facility, uh, the aquatic center, and rehabbed the, the major uh, indoor aquatic facility, um, renovated the pavilion, I think, twice, uh, renovated the golf course clubhouse, and now we're doing, um, not the clubhouse, the entire course we had redesigned and also now are, are adding a uh, new maintenance facility and uh, a newer clubhouse. Um, been an avid fisherman your whole life, I know that. Uh, and uh, have, we have um, fishing tournaments now at Johnson Park annually that you've been a part of. Uh, this new creek stabilization project is also gonna bring fishing to Elk Grove in a safe environment along the creek instead of along the highway. Um, and uh, once again, just your common sense approach uh, uh, helped me in a lot of decisions. You know, a lot of times you, they say you only need three votes and you can pass it. Well, sometimes that's, you don't want to do that because it's ignoring the other two people. And I always felt that everybody should talk on an issue, everybody has a vote, and even maybe there are two people that were descending, their opinions were important in coming to a, the right decision. And oftentimes, you, if you don't listen to those <coughs> descending votes, you may not change your mind on an issue. So they bring a lot of valuable information. And Ralph was one of those type of guys that could sit back and analyze the conversation and then bring that common sense uh, insight that maybe some of the other people who were more passionate about the issue uh, didn't think about and uh, really helped uh, in many situations could change the vote and how, how we voted on things. So thank you for being true to your beliefs and your philosophies and and what uh, you brought to the table, and not just being uh, a yes person going along with the vote with the crowd. And I think a lot of times we did uh, agree on most of the stuff, but there were times that we didn't, and um, once again, I appreciated um, uh, your honesty and your input. So, and good luck. I know you're going to be around involved in other things. You're yeah, we back coaching next football. Week. Uh, <laughs> coaching, fo coaching football is still involved with that, and you're going to be still active in the community. So, it's not goodbye, it's just uh, thank you. Um, it's been great, you know, working on this board with you. And I do want to thank Mayor Johnson for making time. He's got a busy schedule, certainly on his <coughs> Thursdays, so thank you for coming out, Craig. But I also, you know, he's going to speak for himself, but I think he knows the importance of losing a community member, an elected official. So, Craig? Well, Ken, first off, I want to thank the Park District on behalf of this community. When we were looking to do the COVID vaccinations, the partners had no hesitation to step up, offer anything we needed, and it really made a phenomenal arrangement for everyone. In fact, uh, OSCO to this day says they've done thousands of these, and nothing's ever been as good as Elk Grove. They, they keep asking, you sure you don't want another one? Sure you don't want another one? I said, no, we're fine, we're good, we're good. But um, they love work with Elk Grove. Matter of fact, they had the top person come in special just to see how we ran it. And your facility, I've been on a, I'm pointing to you, but commissioners the one behind it, did a phenomenal job. And we can't thank you enough. We're talking about, worried about XRP. I said, what about Garden Terrace? My staff goes, oh, Mary, they may. They go, nope, we'll give it to you, no problem. Whatever you need, we'll get it done. But we thank you for that. And the partnership between the parks and the village is vital. Uh, we work well together. We have a protection system, we other things, COVID shots. We work well together. We sometimes discuss things good, and it should be that way. But the bottom line is, we all come from the same beginning. We care about a village, and Bill's right. All three of us graduate together. Um, someday I tell you the story how I set the park board president on fire in science class, but that's another story. Yes. Uh, true story. Uh, but Ralph came when we were in junior high together, and um, has been here. And when you have that kind of caring at any board, it means so much. You know, Jeff Frankie's here, grew up here in Oak Grove. Um, you know, the rest, everyone's been here. You can see that when it comes to government. Because our jobs are not always fun. A lot of times it's very unfun. Um, but we care deeply about this village, and no one I know cared more about the village than Ralph. And um, it demonstrated that. And Ralph and I disagreed on things over times and stuff. But it doesn't mean we don't work together. And that's good government. Good government is where you can agree to disagree. 
and you still work together to move on. And that means a lot. We don't have council wars, we don't have battles that way. Well, you voted wrong on this, so I'm gonna get you on the next one. We don't do that. And you guys are phenomenal what you did in the Park District. And you're the ones that are really out in the forefront. People deal with you folks every day. Whether the kids are playing the park, <coughs> playing a sport, at the pavilion, at the golf course, you really have an impact on this community. And your caring and your support and your work show. And you're losing a big cog here. Um, Ralph has done a great job. I can't believe it's been 18 years. I remember walking with you when you first decided to run the first yeah. time and stuff, knocking on doors. And um, same thing we did with Bill. I mean, it's because you're lucky, Elk Grove. You got people that truly care about it. And I'll tell you, uh, as much as I like Scotty coming on board, it's sad to see Ralph leaving because I know you did a lot of good and you cared and your fingerprints will be left all over a lot of facilities. So on behalf of the village, we thank you. I know Jeff Frankie, he's our trustees here tonight. We thank you for your dedication to the community. We thank you for what you did with the Park District. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank Trish and the family, because the family that gives up, they're the ones you're not home with. You're the ones you gotta miss things for. And uh, we thank them for sacrificing to allow you the time to do what did. But Ralph, you made the village a much better place. You won't be forgotten. And um, on behalf of everyone, all 35,000 residents, and all the businesses, thank you for what you did. God bless you. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your fishing. And uh, keep coaching our youth football. And uh, more importantly, keep running the, the fantasy football league. Uh, enjoy that. Yeah. Much. <laughs> Just the draft. Thank you. Buddy. All right. Thank you. God bless. The, the partnership you talked about, the one thing that we actually missed on was the concert series. So I enjoy how you and George have your little back and forth. Would you like to tell the people the, the lineup, one through four, for you know, who's starting on July 4th, Mayor John? We're excited. We have Daughtry, uh, Chris Daughtry of American Idol fame. Um, for the younger people, my daughter-in-law, Brittany, says, I'm actually going to come on your concerts, Mr. Johnson. you got a band member I know. <laughs> and, uh, so we got Daughtry. Uh, then we finish up our night. That's at uh, Rotary Green. That's the 4th of July. Uh, by the way, last night, the trustees were very generous. We kicked up the amount of money for our fireworks display by 50%. Um, we jokingly said at the luncheon today, people want to task and be crying when they see what we do here in Oak Grove. Uh, we're going to really have a great celebration, if I don't mind a plug. Uh, the green ribbons you see out there, in front of your house, all that. Grab those green ribbons, come on the 4th, turn them in. Uh, we're going to be drawing at least 10, if not more, restaurant coupons. $100 each to the people that turn them in. We're gonna give you a ticket to thank them um, for their support through the year. <coughs> Fireworks beyond belief. Then we come to Village Elk Green. Grove, Elk Grove restaurants. Yes, Elk Grove restaurants. Yep, they suffer doing things. Then on the 13th, we come back to the parking lot here between the Park District, the Library, and the Village, and we have uh, George Thorgood and the Destroyers. On the 20th, we have Loverboy and, of course, Old Goats, on the 27th, we have Mike Love, the original, and the Beach Boys coming to Elk Grove. And we joke, 40 years ago, who would have thought the Beach Boys would be playing in the parking lot in Elk Grove Village? But they're coming, it's gonna be a great turnout, and we thank the Park District that I did today at her uh, luncheon. Um, the unity in the community is not only the residents coming united, it's the government's working united. And that unity means a lot. So we thank the Park District for the continued support, and um, everyone, we're looking forward to it. And this is the yep. summer, from Rotary Fest in, in um, June to the concert in July, or play party picnic in partnership with the Park mm -hmm. District, the library in July, to the um, uh, our Memorial Day coming up on May 31st, to the October Fest um, in September, and to finish up with the tree lighting in November. We're celebrating. Everything's going to be bigger and better than before. We're celebrating. We're proudly, we did not scale back. We're getting bigger. We were not afraid to go forward, and now we're proven right. And um, it's going to be a summer to remember in Oak Grove. So, again, Bill, thank you. Ralph, Scott, Tom, Jim, or John, thank you. I know uh, Tom's not here, or Bob, I mean, is not here. Um, so, we thank you, though. I'm serious. It means a lot. That's why I was glad I came by tonight. Um, you don't realize, we could not have gotten through this pandemic without working together. No doubt. And we, we couldn't have. And this town is stronger than it's ever been. You guys are doing well, the Phil's doing well, the library's doing well, and the community's doing well. So thank you again for everything. No problem. All right, Mr. Sauter, any 
Parting words for our residents? Well, I, you know, thinking last meeting was my last meeting, it kind of burned my <laughs> farewell speech, but, but uh, believe it or not, I have more to say. Oh, so um, the, the, the theme in here was about um, resolving conflict and coming out with decisions. And I will say this, in my 18 years, I, I've been on both ends of these votes where I've won some and lost some, and I, but I'm proud of every single one of them. Um, Ron Foster, when I first got on the board, uh, set the tone for me um, because he was adamant that if we got in a fight about something, and Ron and I got in a few, you and I got in one first meeting, I think, and it was, okay, let's go have a beer. It was what you said. And that was kind of the theme of our board uh, from day one. And it's not, it's not um, a coincidence that each one of us has been involved in team sports. And I think that's why it's important for our community. Get your kids involved in things. Get your kids involved in things where you're working with people from a young age. Because you do, do learn how to um, resolve conflict and, and to work through problems and to come out with what I would have to say are the best decisions. And, you know, even the ones we may have screwed up on, we were able to fix them later. Um, and that's important too, that we're not so egotistical that we think, okay, we just made the best decision. We're gonna die on the sword for this. Uh, the, the stupid lightning detection system being one of them. <laughs> 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 All right, Scott, I told you I'm not turning off the mic. Go ahead, Rob. No, I'm just kidding, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. It. But John and I have gone to battle on that one for, for years now. Um, but I think it, the, the important thing is the teamwork aspect of, of this board. I'm so proud to have known all of you, and I'm glad uh, Jeff's here representing the trustees and Mayor Johnson's here because we had some, uh, we missed another one, Cheltenham, the Cheltenham property. I mean, that went from- Chelmsford. Or Chelmsford. It went from, uh, it was maybe gonna be sold to developers to make town uh, uh, houses, to now it's going to be in the future, and that's, you know, Scott, that's your, your marching order, and is to work with these guys and make that a spectacular park in an area that doesn't have any other park, quite frankly. So I'm very proud of all of that. Um, I'm so glad to, and I, I should also mention the staff, uh, especially, I'm so um, impressed with the professionalism and the care and the de dedication that everybody in the room uh, sitting here on staff and, and everybody that works in this park district exhibits on a daily basis. It's huge. This is an exceptional community. It's built of, of many parts. Um, and I guess I'm remiss to not say they're our very active community too, because we're not making decisions in a vacuum. We're listening to people. And I'm so glad that we don't have a bunch of people that just gripe um, in a vacuum, instead they come in here, they talk to Bill, talk to Tom, talk to Jen, me, Bob, and soon you, um, to, uh, to help us make decisions to, to, for the betterment of the community. Um, I, I have a camper's view of, of um, the job I did here, and it's, I feel I've left it a better place than when I got here, and uh, that's important to me. So uh, this is bittersweet. Um, I'm going to miss doing this, and um, but I'm so gratified that Scott Carlson is the guy taking my spot. Um, I followed him uh, a little bit a few years later in football, and then he handed the reins off to me in basketball for the referees, and I uh, coached my one of my sons, and uh, I can't say enough about um, how glad I am that Scott Carlson is going to be a commissioner, or is a, now a commissioner. For Elk Grove Park District, so um, you don't have any shoes to fill, man. You got your own. <clears throat> so that's it. I, I know that was longer than my original farewell speech, but I, I think I'm done now. <laughs> All right. And Tom and I talked. You know, we're going to let the public know that uh, we knew you were going up the coach's corner with us because that's one of the things we do after our meeting. So if anybody would like to say goodbye to Ralph, we'll be at coach's corner. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> That's correct. He's not. Yeah. But how's that? If anybody would like to say thank you to Ralph, we'll be at Coach's Corner in about 15 minutes. So, thank you again, Ralph. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we are at payment of the bills. I've got uh, four dates. I've got April 15, 2021, in the amount of $815,922.82. 
April 22nd, 2021, in the amount of $180,987.37. April 29th, 2021, in the amount of $176,095.45. May 6th, 2021, in the amount of $70,547.81. Do any commissioners have any questions or comments regarding these four sets of bills? I need a motion and a second to it for approval. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. <coughs> Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay, at this point, uh, at this time, I would like to have a motion, a second, to adjourn Cena Dia. So moved. Second. Uh, okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adjourn Cena Dia. May I have a roll call vote? Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. <coughs> yes. May I have a motion and a second to convene the annual meeting of the Park Board of Commissioners of the Elk Grove Park District? So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we convene the annual meeting of the Board of Park Commissioners of the Elk Grove Park District. May I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Yes. At this time, I would like a motion and a second to elect the executive director, Ben Curcio, as the temporary chair of the Park District Board. So moved. Okay, go ahead. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we elect Ben Curcio as the temporary chair. May I have a voice vote? Yes. 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 Ben, you get the gavel. Enjoy. <coughs> I'm disappearing then. Take it easy. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Can I milk this? Should we have played da 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 I would like to open the floor for the nomination of the president of the Park District Board. Are there any nominations? I nominate Tom Cook. Do you need a second? Yeah. I'll second it. Uh, roll, uh, so a vote is called in. So if there's more than one commissioner nominated, a vote is called in order. Uh, nomination received. Commissioner Cook is voted as president of the Park District Board. So now do you got to hand the gavel back or what? You got to continue. Uh, that's right, president. Thanks. Yep. Okay, I would like to open the floor. Uh, nominations for vice president of the Park District Board. Are there any nominations? I nominate Bob Yetke for vice president of the Park District Board. Second. Okay, are there any other nominations? Okay. If there's no other nominations, uh, Commissioner Bayecki, Bob Yetke, is voted as vice president of the Park District Board. Yay. Yay. Can I have a motion to appoint secretary of the Park District Board? I nominate Scott Carlson. <laughs> to be secretary of the Park District Board. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Well, you you, you got to get a second. Was there a second? I Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we appoint Scott Carlson as secretary. May I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Walls? Yes. He never saw it coming. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Proud of it. Yes, both. <laughs> President Cook? Yes. It was either that or Treasurer. How come you did a voice for on that one? It didn't happen here. I don't know why. Okay. Just to lock it in, maybe. <laughs> Just to Can I have a motion to appoint treasurer of the Park District Board? I nominate John Walls. I'll second that. Are there any other nominations? Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we appoint John Walls as uh, treasurer. May I have a roll call vote? Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Yes. Okay. Congratulations, everybody. Yay. Okay, we can uh, reconvene the board meeting. Do we need a motion to do that? Yes. Okay, so, so motion second. to reconvene. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes.
Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. President Cook? Yes. And we're actually going to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner O'Malley? No. <laughs> that was for Ralph, so no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do to Kathy. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Wall? Yes. President Trump? Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Yeah, there. there we go. <laughs>